So this is a video that I've wanted to make for a long time, and I've actually been trying to make it for a couple of weeks, and it keeps turning into something bigger than I want it to be. Uh, basically, the question is, is how many blades should I put on my wind turbine? And the simple, very direct answer to that is as few as necessary. And a lot of times whenever this comes up, it's uh, people talking to me about East Debris turbines because they come by default with a three blade hub, but they have an optional five blade hub. So lots of people ask me whether or not they should get the five blade hub. Uh, but this pretty much applies to any uh, anything that you're, you're buying off the shelf. So I always tell everybody, Three blades, that's what you should do. Three is a great number, it it works best, that's why it's the industry standard. And a lot of times uh, I will see people ask why. And what inspired me to actually get around to making this video is a friend of mine posted in one of the groups, one of the Facebook groups, asking why an additional blade slows down a rotor. That's the biggest reason why you want as few as necessary. The more blades you have, the slower it turns. And most of the people who respond to this, uh, it, when anybody asks, is because drag. Adding more blades adds drag to the rotor. And I really like Hess's logic around that response, and it's a, it's a logic that I had for a, a long time. And it is, if a blade adds a certain amount of force and a certain amount of drag, then adding more blades just cancels out. And that would be the reality if you only had those two things. But the reality is that there's three different forces at play here. And we're going to talk about that third force and why adding more blades slows everything down. So let's talk about the three different things that are going on. We have our wing, like so. You wouldn't believe how many times I've drawn this picture. The way the wind turbine works is our wind comes and hits that leading face and it's deflected like so. And that's what drives our blade forward. That's our first force. That's our thrust. Now, as the blade is moving forward, there's air over here. So it's got to run into this air and push it out of the way. That's the second force. That's drag. And that is a, a thing that anything moving through the air is going to have. And if these were the only two forces at play, then has this logic would be exactly right. You add another blade and the additional you know, force and drag, they cancel out. You don't go faster, you don't go slower, everything stays the same. But what happens is there is a third force, and what is following behind this blade is an area of disrupted air. As the blade moves through the air, it stirs everything up around it, and it leaves a wake of turbulence behind it. Turbulence is back here. That's our third force. So now, whenever we think about a wind turbine, we tend to think about a circle that's got some blades spinning around in it. But a wind turbine is not a circle. It's actually a cylinder. Good cylinder, right? As our wind hits the blades and forces them to turn around, it's also traveling through the rest of the cylinder and constantly replacing all of the air here with nice, clean, fresh wind. So we have our wake of disrupted air that's on the wrong side of the blade, but whatever. We have our wake of disrupted air following the turbine blade, but the fresh wind is always pushing it down further down the cylinder. It's constantly being replaced. Whenever you have blades that are tuned properly to the generator and are operating efficiently, turbulence never becomes an issue because that turbulent air is always gone before the next blade gets there. 
But an important thing to keep in mind is that not everything up there happens at the rate of the wind blowing. My I-2000, for example, whenever it's got a 30 mile an hour wind hitting the face, the tips of the blades can be running over 200 miles an hour. They get going very, very, very fast. And now, as our wind turbine turns, we've got this wake of disrupted air. The faster it turns, the bigger this wake gets. And the bigger the wake gets, the less room there is between that disrupted air and the next blade. And things can get moving so fast that there are conditions where this blade will cut or will get into that turbulent air before the wind can push it out of the way. Whenever the blade gets into that turbulent air, it no longer runs efficiently. It no longer has nice clean air driving the blade forward and it no longer has nice clean air to cut through in front. The air is moving all over the place and it doesn't run very well. And if you actually get going fast enough, the blade tips will they'll flutter and make a lot of noise. I actually got that on the video here. One of my first So why does adding another blade slow it down? And that is because whenever you add another blade, that distance between this blade and that turbulent air from the blade in front of it is smaller. The smaller that distance is, the slower the turbine can go before all those blades start entering turbulent air. So now you might say, but Justin, you're using five blades on one of your turbines on purpose. And that's because there's exceptions to everything. If we're always dealing with math. This is a lot of uh, a lot of equations that go into this and basically, you know, putting it very simply, you have these criteria that added together equal the ideal wind turbine blade. If you just go in and change one of these criteria and add another blade, it no longer equals the perfect wind turbine blade. Now you can change these other criteria and make them, you know, whatever is necessary and still get the same result. But if you're buying blades off a shelf somewhere, that's more than likely not going to be an option. If you are carving your own blades in your own shop, kudos by the way, you can do all the math and get the the ideal blade with whatever number you want you know within again certain limitations so if you are buying them off a shelf use as few as possible a popular response to that is well okay so they don't turn as fast in in uh, high winds but i don't often have high winds so wouldn't i want it turning earlier to make a little power all the time versus peak power rarely. And that's also a little bit of a flawed logic. And there's two reasons why. The first reason is that there's only so much power available in the wind. And of that power, you can only have 60% of it. This is the bet's limit, by the way. And with the way the world works as we currently understand it, it cannot be defeated. And you should always be leery of any manufacturer that says that they can defeat the bet's limit. The second reason is that these turbines do not produce power on a linear scale. So now it's very easy to think of a one kilowatt turbine that makes all of its power at 30 miles an hour that well if it's only if the wind's only moving 10 miles an hour then it should make you know 330 watts because it's easy to look at this and think you know, linearly. Well, that's one-third, so it should make one-third power. But the reality is that most of these little turbines, they produce power on a curve, and the way the power is produced in the wind, also on a curve. And these curves 
are quite often aggressive. They look more like this. So even if the turbine starts turning earlier, it's still only going to have so much power available at a given wind speed. You know, for example, my I-2000 with three blades, it takes about a seven mile an hour steady wind hitting it to get it to spool up and start making some power. If I had a five blade hub on it, it would probably spool up a little bit sooner, probably closer to the four mile an hour mark, a nice steady wind, but it's still not going to make any power until the wind gets up there to about seven to 10 miles an hour. And at 10 miles an hour, whether it's got ten, or three blades or five blades, it's gonna turn the same speed. It doesn't start slowing down. It doesn't start lo losing efficiency up until, you know, well into the 20s. So with most of these micro turbines, adding more blades is simply adding cost and complexity and not gaining you anything. So my goal with this video was to try and make something that uh, summarizes the effect in a way that's easy to understand but without getting too heady. And I do have to admit that a lot of how I presented it is fundamentally wrong while also allowing the idea to come across. There are two sources out there that I do recommend looking into if you are interested in knowing more. Uh, the first one, and I'm going to try to remember to put links in the bottom here, but I'm going to forget until someone remember, reminds me. Uh, the first one is, there's another uh, channel called uh, Engineering with Rosie, and she actually talks about the uh, design of commercial wind turbine blades. And she's got two or three videos that talk about some of the criteria to go into them, and she brushes a little bit on the math. And that's because that's what all this is. It's a bunch of math. And if you are really, really into learning exactly how this works, I strongly recommend um, a, a guy named Adrian Crackton. Uh, if you see this I, and I mispronounced your name, I do apologize. He's got a website called KD Wind Turbines. And this dude is probably the most knowledgeable person I've ever spoken to in regards to micro wind turbines. He not only understands the math, but he understands the math that makes the math work. And he will explain the answer to whatever question you ask in a way that suggests that he honestly believes that you are as smart as he is and just haven't been exposed to this data before. It's an adventure and I've learned a, a lot just from my very brief conversations with him, a lot of that being trying to learn how to understand what he just told me. So again, here, the, the idea was supposed to be a simple, quick video, and I want this to be the simple, quick video. If you think that I have presented something in here so inaccurately that it needs to be corrected, explain, to, tell me what it is, and I will try and address it, and we'll look at making another video, because... I want a simple explanation for for this for this question. It's easily the most frequently asked question I've I've gotten, and it tends to be a subject that is, the more you understand about it, the more complicated it gets. So, again, I want the simple I want the simple video. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Again, if I, I'm interested in criticism and critiquing uh, with this subject. Uh, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.